in this video we will focus on the model's face. So after adjusting the general light and shadow, it's time to start working on particular parts of the image. The usual way I would recommend is to start working on larger areas and after having them adjusted, start working on smaller areas and finally on details. So here the order will be we adjusted the overall light and shadow in the background and now we will be working on the face. Then we will adjust the hair, the eyes and we will be working on details. So let's add another adjustment layer. Let's move over to this little icon. And again, we are going to work with the curves adjustment layer. So that way I have added another adjustment layer and to keep things tidy, I'm just going to quickly rename it face. That way we have two adjustment layers curves and I can see that the first one is related to the face. And on the second one, I have S-shaped curve. If I wouldn't rename those layers, it could be a bit confusing because all of them would look the same. Okay, so let's zoom in in our image. And now let's brighten the face of the model. Since his face is the central part of the composition, I want to enhance it. I want to make it more three-dimensional. So I'm going to be working with the Curves Adjustment tool and I'm going to be now sampling the particular areas. So let's move over to this little icon. It's Targeted Adjustment tool. By clicking on this icon, I have selected the tool. And now I will sample from the face area from the brightest part and from the darkest part. If you have a look at this diagonal line, keep your eye on it. Now if I'm moving with the cursor hovering over the face, this little circle keeps moving. That happens because I'm dynamically sampling from the image. If I move over bright part of the image, you can see that this circle moved upwards on the diagonal line. And if I move to dark part on the image, the circle moves dynamically downwards. That way I can maintain control over the process and evaluate particular light and shadow values in the histogram. So let's sample now from the part of the face that I would like to brighten, let's say from this part and from the darkest part, let's say around this area. Now having these two control points added to the diagonal line, I can start pulling the first one upward and that way I will make the highlights in the face brighter. And this second control point is basically blocking those changes. Since it's positioned here, it's not affecting shadows. It's keeping shadows untouched. Let's zoom out and toggle on and off on this layer to see the changes that I have applied. You can ignore at this stage background and the plants because I'm going to mask the face layer. I just want to make the face brighter. I can still push it a little bit further. However, I want to maintain this texture and this division between the nose and cheek of the model. Okay. So now having adjusted highlights in the face, I would like to mask this adjustment layer to have those changes applied only in this area. If I zoom out, you can see that these changes now apply over the whole image. So all I need to do now is to click on the mask and next hit command I on the keyboard to invert the mask. Now we have the mask black. Those changes are still there, but they are completely concealed. To reveal them, I have to simply paint with a white color over the black mask. So I need to select the brush. I'm hitting B on my keyboard. I'm decreasing size of the brush with left square bracket. I need to be painting with white color. So I'm hitting X on the keyboard to swap these colors. Now I have white color selected and let's just paint over this part of the image that I would like to have brightened. Opacity 60 is too much. I'm going to hit 3 on my keyboard and change it to 30. And let's 
paint a bit over the neck. I have lost a bit of the shadows on the nose, so I'm going to decrease size of the brush, hit X on the keyboard again to swap these color samples, and now I will be painting with black color, which will bring back the shadows. And opacity 30 is too much. I just hit 10 to make the brush a little bit softer and to revert those changes in a very subtle way. Okay, let's toggle on and off that layer to see the changes. I'm pretty happy with the way they look like. I might introduce a bit more of the highlights on his right cheek. So I will be painting with a white color, so I need to hit X on the keyboard to swap color samples and opacity 10 is fine. Just to paint a little bit more the same on the eye, on the cheek, on the forehead, on all those parts that I would like to make brighter. Okay. Let's zoom out and have a look at the image before changes and after applying changes. I think it's a perfect starting point. We can always get back to this adjustment layer in the later stage of the edit if it will be needed. Now we are ready to move further and work on adjusting light and shadows in the model's eyes.